Now, there were things other than Donald Trump, believe it or not, in 2017. We look back now at the biggest news of the year. Well, there was some tragedy, a spate of mass shootings, natural disasters, even a crazy mistake at the Oscars and more. Our information was held hostage. The single biggest ransomware attack in the history of the Internet. Dylan Roof sentenced to death. We had to get justice. After murdering nine African Americans. The biggest award, La La Land. Yeah! There's a mistake. Moonlight. Best picture. There has been an attack on the British Parliament. You can see the car as it barrels across the bridge. A man has been shot outside Parliament. Oh, my God. Suicide bomber set off an explosion in an Ariana Grande concert. But there was smoke everywhere, there was blood on the floor. Manchester! You looked fear right in the face and you said, no, we are Manchester and the world is watching. A van plowing into pedestrians on London Bridge. Get he was there to do one thing and one thing only, to kill people. A van running over worshippers near a mosque in London. This was an attack on Muslims. A van has plowed into at least 100 people on the streets of Barcelona. A sarin gas attack in Syria. No one is doing anything to stop this. Trump hitting Syria after that deadly chemical attack. Tonight I ordered a targeted military strike. Words of war. They will be met with fire and fury. The country can produce miniature nuclear warheads. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission. Judge Neil Gorsuch is sworn in to the highest court in the country. So help me God. Congratulations. Uh, back up down in the back of House Majority Whip Steve Scalise and three others shot. A deadlock and a mistrial. Bill Cosby is a free man. We're going to retry the case. Women who spoke out. Initially against Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein, then others. It is a movement. Me too. Dominating social media. We are here. We will not go away. Time Magazine's person of the year, the silence breakers. Harvey. This song is still blowing and blowing this land sideways. Catastrophic floods submerged one of the largest cities in the country. Got a whole family out there in the water. Rise of a human spirit that ran deeper than the floodwaters. Hurricane Irma is right over us right now. One of the most powerful storms ever recorded. Death and destruction across the Caribbean. The biggest catastrophe in Puerto Rican history. A humanitarian crisis. We can't let them die. It looks like a bomb went off. The deadliest fire disaster in state history. And this looks like World War II. The fires in Southern California continue to grow. My house is on fire. Thousands of people at a music festival. We have an after shooter inside the fairground. The deadliest mass shooting in American history. The deadliest terror attack here in New York City since 9-11. I, I need an ambulance. Killing at least eight people with a pickup truck. Church massacre. That church is my family. 26 killed and 20 others wounded in what is now the deadliest shooting in Texas history. It'll be the first time in 99 years a total solar eclipse spanned the entire continental U.S. The largest jackpot ever won by a single ticket. I had a pipe dream and my pipe dream has finally come true. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are engaged. An American is about to marry into the royal family. She chooses me, I choose her. But we're a fantastic team. Uh, impossible to unpack all that in a year, but uh, the Me Too movement has changed everything. Um, and I was talking to the attorneys earlier in the week, Jeannie, and the law really hasn't figured this out in terms of not just prosecuting but also who keeps their jobs in the meantime who gets fired immediately due process where it fits into this or not um, but I see no signs of it slowing down in 2018 it's gonna you know I think in Washington the question is who's next yeah yeah and I think the, the scope of it I think is what's so shocking it's every industry it's people at all levels of the economic ladder it's women who for decades have been victimized by this and some men too who have finally felt like they've been able to come out of the shadows so I think you're right I think we're seeing the very tip of the iceberg this year and I think it's going to continue and I think quite frankly the president helped usher it in because I think so many people who woke up and found out that this person who had done these outrageous things on tape said outrageous things on tape groped women was in the White House I think was a sign to many people that if they didn't speak out now nothing was going to ever stop this and so I think that just kind of catapulted it yep. and we've seen uh, we've seen it throughout the year and I think you're right I think it's going to continue and it's not just in the US it's around the world quite frankly um, you know Dominic we showed a clip of uh, that tragedy in Las Vegas with the mass shooting and and this year, not long ago, we also had the anniversary of Sandy Hook, and it just struck me 
how little has changed. Um, and the date lines will change. It might be a concert here, it could be a church there, it could be a school there, uh, rural, suburban, inner city, it doesn't matter. Um, but yet nothing changes seemingly. You know, Richard, I, I can recall when we would sit around this table and Andrew and I, disaster after disaster, and you would ask us what we thought, and we would agree, and, and it was a saddening feeling, but we agreed that nothing would change because of the power of the NRA, and I think we still saw that story this year, the power of the NRA. We saw little, the little hints that they might budge, but, <clears throat> but who knows. And, and also, the story this year, you mentioned the shooting in Vegas, these lone wolf attacks where people were using guns and vehicles, and that's the new, the new terrorism that we're facing here in America. I, I was struck watching those clips by how many of them if not more preventable, certainly the impact could have been lessened if we had and there were warning signs taken, too. taken steps. All of the shootings, and we've done nothing about it, we, we've talked time and time again about climate change, and we see the hurricanes and the, and the fires uh, that we went through. The, the terrorist attacks, whether you know there were people who would argue for, for greater screening or other preventative measures, or certainly safety measures in pedestrian areas, which I think you know, the, we, the London Bridge in Manchester and the West Side Highway attacks. So there, there are ways to prevent those sorts of things. And it just, it doesn't seem like we ever generate the will to really prevent or mitigate some of those things. That and to me, to, to that point, what has struck me is when we have big problems, in the past, presidents of different parties have marshaled the public uh, to rally to something. Now, maybe we can disagree on the margins if they did it right, wrong, or indifferent, but there was a point. And I just see it more and more often lately that, well, can't look to Washington for a solution for this, or even if the public, 90% of the public, 95% of the general public, 90% of gun owners believe in background checks, Washington can't do that because of lobbying or whatever else. And you're right, I think, Andrew, the bigger problems when you need a government to do something about it, and certainly leadership, um, sometimes it's wanting. And, you know, Joe, for me, um, early this week, uh, I sat down with uh, Ray Ramundi, who's a reporter with Fast One, who spent um, three days in Puerto Rico. Has family there. He went there with the governor-elect in New Jersey um, and then toured a lot of the island, including the mountain areas. Those are American citizens. Three and a half million Americans at the end of the day. I know you know this and we know this, but I know a lot of people say, oh, Spanish speaking, it might as well just be some country in Latin America. No, they're Americans. And the fact that more than a third of the country still doesn't have electricity and running water is really shameful. And, uh, you know, to me, I just think that's one of many underreported stories that here we are about to get into the new year. And these people, Americans, are basically been told, if you're not on your own here, you're certainly not a priority. Uh, I think that what happened in Puerto Rico, what has happened in Puerto Rico, is in many ways a microcosm for the missed opportunity of this Trump presidency. I think you have a president that comes into office, which, again, it doesn't matter whether you like him, whether you hate him, who are his claim to fame is building infrastructure. And instead of going there, when you have people like Elon Musk saying, we can literally build a brand new power grid from scratch and create brand new best practices in this little tiny yep. enclave of America that can be instituted around the country. Instead of doing that, no, we go and reinstitute worse, worse practices. And, and blame them for their and, own and, you know, And saying yeah. that these are, you know, basically reinstituting the very same system, the very same outdated system that failed in the first place. So, you know, I think that's, that's the sad part. That, again, we have, we've, we're so angry as society that we have pitted people against the haves, the have-nots, to say that if you're in pain, that it's these other people that are the source of your pain. I think that aspect right now is, again, is, is the lost opportunity because, what again, I say it doesn't matter whether you're Republican, Democrat, whether you hate President Trump, love President Trump, he was uniquely situated to do a lot of things that could have done a lot of good. And, and I what's think behold is no political party. One more point, I know we're heavy, but those were horrible stories for the most part that we saw in that piece. We forget the best of our of ourselves that we saw in the aftermath of so many of those. Yes. And that we all come together, we all are generous of spirit. There is a, a plus 
or a silver lining to some of those miserable stories. And I think we overlook that. And I just and wanted we, to make sure we remember Absolutely. It. We saw that in the aftermath of Vegas. We saw it in the aftermath of Charlottesville, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, and even with the Me Too movement, it's a movement overdue. Um, and that people aren't waiting for someone else to do something yeah. they're, they're doing it themselves. Um, I'm glad you pointed that out. Coming up next, we're going to take a look closer to home. Saw a wave election that swept Democrats into power in New Jersey and Westchester, Nassau counties, but also saw a whole bunch of politicians battling corruption cases and managing to stay out of prison. All that and more after the break.